Hello everyone, and welcome to the next edition of the Holland Land Office Museum Artifact Video Series. My name is Ryan Duffy, and I am the director of the museum, and this week we are going to talk about probably Genesee County's most famous unsolved crime in its history, the Linden Murders. Now, the Linden Murders was a series of three crimes that stretched across seven years that claimed five victims in a very brutal way. The first one occurring in 1917, and the last occurring in 1924. Now, the first murder did not actually occur in Linden, which is a little hamlet in the very southern border of Genesee County in the town of Bethany. Uh, it actually occurred a little bit farther north of Linden in an area called Hunts Woods. Uh, now, this crime is probably the most odd of the three because the victim is not even known. Uh, so this crime occurred in November of 1917. Uh, one evening, uh, two people were seen walking the country roads of Bethany by uh, residents there, a man and a woman, uh, that seemed to be dressed rather well but didn't appear to be locals. Uh, that evening they saw two, the two of them walking uh, in that direction and later on they only saw the man walking back. Uh, so the uh, next day uh, Mr. Hunt was going through his woods and he found a hastily dug grave with a body in it. This body was of a young woman who was stabbed repeatedly and beaten to the point where no recognition could really be gained. Uh, what made it even more difficult is that she had no identification upon her uh, and no one uh, seemed to be uh, report anyone missing. Uh, so this crime occurred right at the beginning of the New York State Troopers uh, life as an agency and so this fledgling agency was brought in to help solve this brutal murder. So a uh, call for any missing persons was put far and wide between Buffalo and Rochester and everywhere in between, uh, yet no claims came back that would really fit uh, what they were dealing with. Um, eventually they had to give the, the victim some sort of identification and what they gave her was the name Ruth. Now you're probably asking where did the name Ruth come from? It actually came from uh, a name that was on one piece of her clothing. Uh, her skirt actually said Ruth on it. However, no other piece of clothing said uh, any name on it, so that's the name that they went with. Um, and this investigation stayed open for months, yet they were not able to find the perpetrator for the murder of Ruth. And she was actually buried in the Popper Cemetery and the historic Batavia Cemetery. Uh, and to this day, we do not know who committed the crime, nor who the crime was committed against. Now we are going to jump ahead almost five years to October 1922, when the second of the Linden murders is committed. The victim of this crime was Miss Frances Kimball, who lived right within Linden, uh, within the boundaries of Linden. She was uh, an elderly woman in her 70s who lived alone on her farm uh, and didn't appear to have any reason for her to be uh, savagely attacked, yet that is what happened. Uh, one day, uh, her neighbors go looking for Frances as she did not appear to be out and they couldn't get in touch with her. Uh, they had tried calling her, they had tried going to the farm and looking for her and could not find her. Uh, eventually, the, through their search, they tried to get into her cellar. However, it was locked from the inside, which was very unusual. So eventually they were able to break into the cellar and that is where they found Frances Kimball uh, beaten to death with a rock in her cellar and stuffed behind the stairs. Uh, this again shook the area as it was not known why anyone would do this and this seemed to be a very deliberate crime because the telephone wires were cut and the body was hidden and access to the area was blocked. This drew more and more attention to the state police and other law enforcement agencies and two theories arose that would kind of become the theme through uh, the history of the Linden murders. Uh, the two thoughts were that it was either an acquaintance or it was a stranger. Now the stranger theory was that someone got off at the train at the depot in Linden as one of the major railroads ran right through Linden and was looking for some money, some something they needed it quick and fast. They found Francis Kimball's 
uh, home, saw it as an easy target. She lived alone um, and was elderly, so possibly they chose her for that reason. Um, hid in the basement, she came down for eggs or some other supplies. They beat her to death, took what they needed, and left. However, this theory doesn't really hold up too well because there doesn't appear to be much taken from her. Um, and it seemed too planned out for that sort of thing. So the other theory arose was the acquaintance theory. Someone who knew her routine, someone who was from the area, and had an axe to grind with her. And this led to several suspects being brought in, yet they were never able to correlate enough evidence to charge anyone with the crime. Uh, and this continues on the theme to the third uh, of the crime that actually claimed three victims this time. So uh, in the end, the Linden murders, uh, there were five victims of uh, the killer or killers. Uh, so the third one, which is probably the most well-known and brought the most spotlight onto the area, was that of the murder of the Whaley's and Abel Morse. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Whaley lived right in Linden, uh, right on the main road, and one evening in March of 1924, uh, they had gone in for the evening and were getting things ready before they would head off to bed. Uh, Mrs. Whaley was in the front parlor sewing up some clothing while Mr. Whaley was in the basement working on some project. When an intruder comes into the home, walks up behind Mrs. Whaley and shoots her in the back, uh, killing her. Mr. Whaley comes up after hearing the gunshot uh, with an axe handle ready to confront whoever came in and he is shot three times in the kitchen. Uh, the perpetrator then dragged both bodies into a front room where he was going to dispose of the bodies. However, before he could, Mrs. Mabel Morris, who owned the local shop in Linden and was lived basically across the street, had come to get her nightly bucket of milk walked in at the wrong time and in the wrong place, and she was actually beaten to death with the axe handle, and she was then dumped with the whaleys uh, in the front room. The perpetrator then doused the bodies with gasoline, threw old carpeting on it, and lit it aflame, uh, which caused an intense fire and charred many of the re remains and the room that it was in, and he left locking all the doors and closing all the windows and tossing away the key. Now eventually the neighbors became sort of weary because Mrs. Morse had not come back to the store and it was especially weird that night because her son was actually going to be playing on the radio from Rochester so everybody was in the store waiting to hear the local boy doing well and so they went out looking for her and eventually they saw smoke coming from the Whaley home and took action. Uh, however, they couldn't get in through any of the doors. They actually had to take a ladder up to the second floor window, smash in the window, and go down and eventually put out the fire. Now, putting out the fire actually got rid of a lot of the evidence, which made the investigation even more difficult. Uh, uh, eventually, authorities were called in to conduct an investigation on who could have done this very terrible crime. And after months and months of investigation and collecting of all different kinds of uh, bullet casings and other uh, evidence, they still weren't able to press charges against anyone. Though the uh, suspect list was somewhat lengthy, uh, especially for a small community like that. Uh, Linden was about a hundred people at the time and every single person who lived there was actually questioned during this investigation. Um, yet a, a, a clear connection to anyone was not really able to be established. Um, and to this day, there still has not been a clear connection to anyone, at least officially. Now, many of the investigators were asked continually about this case throughout their career, and it was said by some of them that they knew who did it, yet they could never pin it on them. And they took that uh, name to the grave with them. However, uh, it is still being discussed and still being looked into and written about and it still captivates the imagination of uh, the residents of Genesee County. Uh, and here at the museum, we have much of that information on display for you. We actually have a lot of the evidence taken directly from those investigations. 
uh, from all three uh, murders and have it on display for you to give your own uh, explanation. Uh, we even have autopsy and crime scene photos. Uh, some of the evidence we have is even a piece of Ruth's hair, which is the only evidence uh, really available uh, in that crime and uh, the only real link back to her. We also have some things from Francis Kimball's house as well as things from Mr. and Mrs. Whaley and uh, from their home and things that were taken directly from the crime scene. So if this, if uh, murder mysteries are your thing and they, and they uh, are quite popular these days, but uh, this is a real live one. And uh, if you're interested, stop by the museum and check out the evidence for yourself and offer up your own explanation. I hope you enjoyed this edition of our artifact video series, and I hope you uh, check out our previous ones and come back for ones more in the future.